Hi, Dr. Karen Joyce here. I'm the Educational Director at SheMaps. Now, I'm filming here today from the Heron Island Research Station on Heron Island, and I'm here all week doing research for James Cook University. Now, I've been coming to Heron since the late 90s, first of all as an undergraduate and then postgraduate student, and so it's a phenomenal place to be, and I feel really, really privileged to be able to come here as part of my day job, and this, this is my office for the week. Now I work mostly out on the reef itself as opposed to the island. Now the island has a research station and also a resort where there's a lot, a lot of tourists come here. So if you're familiar with the coast of Queensland at all, Heron Island is off, off the coast of Queensland, off Gladstone, so about two and a half hour boat ride. Now what I've been doing for all, the, all this time, all these years, we, we come roughly once a year or so, and I'm interested in the different habitats that we have out on the reef. So the coral, the algae, and sediment, rock, and all that sort of thing. So I'm interested in what we have, where we have it, and how it changes over time. Now, since we've been coming for so long, we've been using a lot of field surveys. So that means we're in the water snorkeling and diving and recording what we see and where we see it with GPS. Now, we've, for 20 odd years, we've been then mapping the reef using satellites. So satellites cover a nice large area, but sometimes they're lacking in a, in a little bit of detail in terms of being able to see the individual corals and that sort of thing. And that's where drones really come in handy. So drones slide nicely into this little gap between what we do in the field survey and what the satellite sees. Drones give us lots of really high detailed data, but they don't cover quite as much of an area as what we see with the satellite. So my mission for this week is to, do, to continue to do some of the drone surveys that we've been doing for the past couple of years. Some of the questions that we're interested in looking at is, first of all, we're interested in counting sea cucumbers, of all things. So we noticed that we could see sea cucumbers in our drone data a couple of years ago now. So we've, we've been repeating the surveys that we've been collecting. So not just in-water surveys, but using the drones to capture that and estimating the number of sea cucumbers that we have on the reef and the impact that they're having across the entire reef as well. We know that there's tens of thousands of them out there, so they're making a really big impact in circling the, the nutrients within the sediments as well. So it's a, it's a quite a cool study that has been picked up there. Now I'm also interested in working out how we can better incorporate drones into calibrating and validating the, the maps and models that we create from our satellite data. So we're using drones quite a lot, but I don't think we're using them to, to our best capacity. So this week is that's, that's our number one question is how we can better incorporate drones into that work workflow and that's that's really part of where my expertise comes in as well. We've got another project looking at seeing if we can use drones and handheld cameras as well to look a little bit more at coral health instead of just is it coral or is it algae but looking at the health as well using multi-spectral cameras and that's something that, that came out of a project that we did last year when we were flying the data and we realized that some of these multi-spectral cameras really are quite amazing in the amount of detail that they'll see on the reef when they're flown from a drone so it's really quite exciting research. So that's, that's pretty much a wrap, of what, a wrap up of what we hope to achieve over the course of this week and we'll then pretty much have an, an absolute truckload of data to process over the next year or so before we manage to come out here again. Mm -hmm.